For anybody that's been living under a rock, Chip is my boy. Chip is a super mobile rushdown character rocking the highest speed in the game. Shadow clones, shurikens, wall running. The ninja aesthetic is cranked to a maximum. But there's one big hurdle that you have to jump over before you can start taking people lunch money. His health. In exchange for his speed that made him out of paper. <laughs> Being the embodiment of live fast, die hard, my man gets violated in every touch of death combo video out there. You know, even when we were right here, I was like, I think he's okay. Nah, he's probably all right, right? What are the odds he's dead here? Like, maybe I thought a pixel. Couldn't be me playing Chip. Not in this game. You gotta be smoking some real good shit to play Chip in this game. I gotta be honest with you. In addition to taking bit damage, Chip doesn't really dish out a lot of damage himself, making him a character that requires a higher number of interactions to kill than most characters. To simplify what this means is that generally, Chip players need to be right way more often than their opponents if they want to win. The solution most new players come to is to focus on themselves to play faster and to miss harder, relying on a lot of air dashes and alpha blades to start to overwhelm their opponent. And while it will work to a certain level, you will hit a clear wall of players that you can tussle with because you haven't developed what I think is the most important skill when it comes to playing chip, subscribing to one of the hottest chip channels on YouTube. But nah, the most important thing when playing Chip is the ability to identify what your opponent likes doing on defense and then adapting your offense to handle that. Dying quick means you have to focus harder on what your opponent is doing and having the right punish because you want it to be over as fast as possible. The longer the fight goes on, a mistake will result in you losing so you can't afford to autopilot wrong and die. Chip lore-wise and character design, He's an assassin that already knows how your opponent wants to escape, and he uses his great intuition in his kit to cut off every option that they have so that they're always wrong on defense. You can't do this if you're too focused on yourself that you're not seeing what your opponent is doing. This guide is going to fast track you to being a better chip player by letting you in on the secrets on what I'm looking for in my opponent, and then being able to have the adaptation to stop it. Since we're doing things a little different over here, I think I'm gonna call this the Chip Adaptability Guide. So to start, learning fighting games is like learning another language. You can get by basic conversation with just generic sayings with most people. But when you meet someone that knows the language and replies with something new, the conversation is over and you lose. It's like me asking you, what high school did you go to? And you reply, good morning. You're over there smiling, you don't even realize you said the wrong thing. And it's not wrong because you said it wrong, it's wrong because that's not what I asked you as your opponent. With this in mind, we're going to address three main phases when it comes to playing chip. Movement in neutral, offense theory, and corner. Chip has the fastest speed in the game and has three jumps that he can use mid-air. On top of that, he has the second fastest air dash in the game. The purpose of these jumps are to bait anti-air options out of your opponent, not to just throw yourself across the screen. And so what I mean by that is, as you jump with your first jump, you're watching your opponent underneath you and looking for them to anti-air. You want to use your jumps to scare your opponent into not anti-airing or pressing any buttons at all, because if they press it too early and you just jump again, then you can land on them and hit them during their recovery. If you quickly burn all of your jumps in the heat of the moment, you're really easy to predict on the way down because you no longer can change your path or bait anything. The problem with most chips is that they're too committal with all of their air options. They immediately air dash or they immediately just jump on their opponent or they immediately jump and then J2K. But this is really easy to deal with because you're not faking or making your opponent twitch to anything. They just have to react to the one thing that you're presenting to them. Putting his jumps and air dashes together allow you to be cheeky so you can jump forward, air dash back to bait the anti-air, and then jump forward again to land on top of them for the whiff punish. The best part about this is if you jump twice and your opponent doesn't anti-air you, 
you could just jump back for your third jump and stay safe. You don't have to commit and force something if it's not there. And because you're still alive, you could just land and try again. One thing that's really underrated with Chip is using his neutral jump and doing nothing. Because Chip has the second fastest air dash in the game, often people will react and do something just at the sight of seeing you jump straight up. If they do something, Chip is fast enough to get in and whiff punish them, and if not, you're safe because you didn't commit to anything at all. But I'm able to do this because they're worried about my jump in and I'm focused on them. I'm focusing on them as I jump around so that I don't just waste the opportunity. The second biggest tip about movement with Chip is that you don't always have to be in the air. Your speed is enough to threaten people into pressing a button. So you can run forward to use FD break to make your opponent flinch into pressing a button to stop you. Because they know if they don't, they now have to deal with your mitts up. This is low commitment but with bit reward because if you're going up against a character like Nagaryuki and you go and you make him flinch, his recovery is so long that Chip is now able to get in and punish him from almost full screen. If you threaten to run in and you break and your opponent doesn't press anything, you didn't lose anything at all because you're not in danger. The key here is that you're looking for the button press so you can make them pay for it. Now let's take this to another level. Let's look at what buttons are they pressing when we threaten them? Because we're getting information. As a chip player, just threatening stuff is giving you information about what your opponent likes to do. For example, if you're going up against a Nago and they like to use far slash, which is a far reaching move that hits mid to try to get you out, then you could keep doing FD break. Or use the upper body and vulnerability from 6P to clash with it and beat it out altogether. But if they're using their sweeping two slash, which is a low hitting move that stops your run approach, then you could change your offense so you use your 6K, which is a low crush move that goes over it. While I am using Nago as an example, this applies to every character in the game. You just have to change the ranges in which you're using your FD break and doing your face based off of their range, but it still applies. The next piece I want to talk about when it comes to movement is pro being proactive versus reactive. Proactively, you can control space in the air by using chips JK in the air. So you can jump around the air as we were talking about earlier to bait different options while at the same time using JK to prevent just in case your opponent jumps. You don't know if they're going to jump or not, but you're blocking off that space just in case they do. This is especially good against characters like Eno that have to navigate that middle ground kind of hovering above in the air right there. Or if you're going up against an opponent that you know likes to jump or in the corner trying to get out the corner, you can just put up JK preemptively to just control and block that space. When you're doing this, you're expecting your opponent to now start running at you rather than jumping because you're blocking that space off preemptively. So when they start running at you, now you use your 2S or your down slash to now prevent that space that they're running at you. If you know you're playing against Eno or Soul, both characters that have low movement moves, such as Ground Viper and Stroke the Bit Tree, you can preemptively be putting out 2S from a distance to show them that you're ready for it and that it will interrupt them if they do it. If your opponent decides to do it anyways, they will get hit. If they keep doing it without thinking about it, they will just lose because you're preemptively snuffing it out and forcing them to do something different. The best thing about this is to make sure that you're doing this at ranges in which if your opponent does not do either of these options, you are still safe. So if I do two slash and my opponent doesn't run at me, I'm good. If they're observant, they can see that I'm basically telling them that I'm ready for it and I'm daring them to do it. Preemptively taking up space makes your opponent a lot more predictable and easier to deal with because you're narrowing the way in which they can approach you. Now let's say you're past the preemptive stage and they've gotten in on you or you got surprised by something that you wasn't ready for. Now let's talk about reactive measures that you can use. As a beginner or intermediate player, cut everything outside of your brain. Immediately your go-to option should be either mashing 5P because it's a three frame move or using 6P which is your anti-air or using 2K for a move like stroke that you wasn't ready for. 
in a pinch you have no reason to be pressing slash no reason to be pressing heavy slash no reason to be pressing dust your go-to should be these buttons because most of the time it will catch them now let's talk about this second phase when playing chip offense first things first the way the offense works in guilty gear if you're doing close slash far slash heavy slash without leaving any delay in between you're wasting your time you're wasting an opportunity every time the reason why I say this is because the only way that your opponent is going to get hit by this if they literally just stop blocking, if they just let go of the controller. So let's look at this. If we think that our opponent is mashing buttons on defense trying to get a hit in on us, what we can do is do close slash, leave a small gap for their move to start up, and then we use far slash to snuff them out and get that counter hit because we left that gap in there now we're going to get that counter hit which is going to get them for pressing buttons now if we think our opponent is being really defensive wanting to block everything that we're throwing at them because they know we're delaying our gatlins instead we can do a close slash run up grab this is working because they're looking for the delay glass these are the fundamentals of Gilster Gear Strive's offense, but I bring this up because Chip's speed and his kit makes him really good at this. Cool, so let's get right into it. So delay Gatlin's beat mashing, cool. The second level is you got them to stop mashing, so now you can tick throw them. Chip has really good speed, so now you can get in so quickly after your tick attack that they can't even see it coming. The third level is using dash reset, so attack with close slash, dash, close slash again. Dash resets messes up mash timing and it makes people impatient. If you feel like your opponent is cycling through these options well, you can go to level 4 of using a jump cancel. You can go in close slash jump cancel, land on them with an overhead. Or close slash dust. Once you've set this foundation, you basically unlocked the Alpha Blade because now they have so many other things to worry about. Alpha Blade is like the least of their concern. This is enough to make you scary already. You don't even have to incorporate special moves yet. It's just more about making sure that you're not on autopilot and that you're paying attention to what your opponent is doing. Are they bat dashing? Are they mashing more? Are they trying to jump out? Are they trying to reversal super you? Keep track of what they're doing and try to tailor what you have with the basics already for example if you're doing a lot of tick throws and your opponent starts back dashing it you could tick with your 2k and run up and do six heavy slash instead of your throw you did that intentionally to catch their back dash one thing a lot of beginners may struggle with is when can i get close slash like what opportunities will i have to get close slash because we know that close slash and far slash are range dependent I can't even tell when I'm going to get which. 2K 2D, which is going to be your gallant into your hard knockdown sweep, is going to be your best bet to get your close slash because you can run up and meaty them. You can get 2K 2D from being crafty on defense for a punish, or you can do it after landing a jump in from doing the stuff that we discussed in neutral. Now let's go into mid-screen offense. As a chip player, you have two decisions you can make. You can go for your win condition by doing the combo that's going to carry your opponent to the corner where chip is strongest. Or you can go for a hard knockdown and do various mix-ups on wake up. Either decision works out fine. This is mainly up to the preference of the player. And also like a matchup thing. So if an opponent has a DP, you're probably more or less likely to not go for mid-subs and go for like the corner push or whatever. It all becomes preference in the end of what you're more comfortable with. But it's key to know that you're making one of these two decisions and not something in between. First, let's talk about mid-subs. Mid-subs are probably the easiest for Chip than they've been in any Guilty Gear series yet. All you have to do is go for a hard knockdown with 2K, 2D and run up and... You can go for a command grab, you can go for a horizontal alpha blade, you can go for a diagonal alpha blade, you can go for an overhead mitts up, you can go for a faultless defense cancel mitts up on the other side. You have OTGs that you can use to mess up the timing of reversals. You get it. The hard part is knowing what beats what because every one of these options loses to something. And to go along with that, you really don't want to be lazy doing the same option over and over because you have so many options. And if your opponent knows the weakness of the one that you keep doing, you're going to be easy pickings. 
So that brings us to conditioning and figuring out what is it that we think our opponent is going to do on a wake up. The command grab will be a blocking opponent and an opponent attempting to do a DP or a flash kick. But it will lose to someone just mashing punch. Horizontal Alpha Blade is good for opponents that smashing standing punch to beat command grabs and is good for catching opponents trying to bat dash the command grab. But it will lose to opponents that are just ready to block it and also ready to grab it because they see it coming. Choose your option based off what you think your opponent is going to do. Don't just pick one, but to pick one. This playstyle is what makes Chip have a high interaction to kill because you don't do much damage while you're doing this. You're more hoping to get meter gain and to slowly chip away at your opponent until you're able to Roman cancel to then do more damage and finish them off. And of course, if you get caught, you're going to take a ton of damage. So be very careful about it. And one of the biggest things to keep in mind is do not go for the command grab if your opponent has meter and has a reversal. In the case of corner carry, this is the corner carry combo you'll be using most of the time. If you have meter for a Roman cancel, you can extend that even more to make sure that you get to that corner or to simply switch sides with your opponent to get them back into the corner. This follows the same fundamentals of offense that we talked about earlier. Yes, you can do rush -o, rush o overhead really quickly and not worry about it, but that's really easy to block. What you want to do is fish for counter hits by leaving a gap in between or fishing to stop them and interrupt them for jumping. Uh, this is a really organic move, and what I mean by that is that you have to really pay attention to what options your opponent are doing here more than any other. Because so many times with chip players, they do the first two hits of the Rekka, their opponent jump out, they do nothing about it. They do it again and again over and over, and then they lose the match because they did not take advantage of that one opportunity that kept happening over and over. So what you can do there is if you think your opponent is going to jump out, delay it so you catch them during the jump. Or if you want to flex on them, you see them jump because you know that they're going to do it. You run under them and air throw them. That's a different level of in your head, a different level of read. But you're practicing that skill of really paying attention to what they're doing. Another thing that often happens in between Rusho and Rokusai is that your opponent likes to either do 5P or 6P to try to interrupt the overhead. One thing that you can do is simply do the first two hits of the Rekka and go for 6P immediately, preemptively. This means that if your opponent presses anything, they're going to get counter hit it and you get to continue running your pressure. This is happening because you're paying attention to what your opponent is doing in between each Rekka. The other thing you can do is nothing. As always, you can do the first two hits of Rush O and literally just block and back up. If you do this, this will give you information as to what your opponent likes to do because you did nothing. You just did your two hits, you stop, see what they do. Now you have it and now you know what they might do next time. Here's some decent mid-screen Roman cancel mitts ups that you can go for, both easy and normal. Once you feel like you've gotten a good handle on it and you want to add more to your game, you can always upgrade to the fast Roman cancel package where you just fast Roman cancels a lot of your typical points where you would normal Roman cancel. This is really good because a lot of people just aren't used to seeing this. Now let's get into the final phase of playing chip. Once you've done your mid screen combo and you've got your opponent to the corner, what do you do? Now let's talk about the corner. In the corner as Chip, he has access to all of his previous offensive options and then some. The additional thing Chip gets access to is to more Alpha Blade utility. Alpha Blade gives you the ability to now go for knockdown mitsups using meaties on either side of your opponent leading to four-way mitsups that are really hard to block. If done properly, your opponent can't do anything but try to guess correctly because if they try to throw you, perfectly timed meaties will still hit your opponent. The second thing Alpha Blades can be used for in the corner is for resets. So one of the two, the two main combos that you'll be using in the corner with Chip are this one and this one. You can go ahead and finish the entire combo and go for the wall break or you can forego the wall break and use Alpha Blade to prematurely end the combo and reset pressure. 
This is really good because it can be unexpected and you also have the ability to end up on either side of your opponent. So it can make it really hard for them to tell which side you're gonna be on so they're basically guessing. Things to kind of keep in mind is that you can switch up what button that you're using for the reset, so the last hit of the combo, to kind of change up the timing for your opponent. So if your opponent is trying to like either jump out of it or to tech out of it in some kind of way, you can change up the timing of it by either you know using the 2K or using a 2D instead or using a close slash, and then going into an alpha blade. So experimenting with that timing can also help. The next thing we have are wall slumps. So if you get your opponent to wall splat while on the ground, you get an opportunity to go for a free 50-50 with two timed alpha blades for frame kills. When I say frame kills, it's just the first alpha blade is used to waste time while their wall is splatted, and then the second one is timed so that you get them right if they come off the wall. When you put this together, you have advanced players that get their opponent in the corner, forego breaking the wall to get another mid sub to get more damage, and then break the wall. Here's some good Roman cancels to have in your pocket while you have your opponent in the corner. Now it wouldn't be a chip video if I didn't talk about his wall running combos. So when it comes to chips wall running combos, one of the main utilities for them is that it gives you more control over the corner and what you want out of it. So if you've been trying to open up your opponent for a while and you landed a few stray hits, so you think that the wall is gonna break before you can pull off one of your two combos, you can use the 6K overhead and use Roma cancel to start the wall running combo and if you go the route of close slash, heavy slash, heavy slash, it puts the opponent away from the wall, which then gives you the freedom for either to go for a wall break still, or to now go for a reset like we talked about earlier. This gives Chip more control over his corner situations because rather than accidentally breaking the wall, you can intentionally forego that to reset the situation in the corner and maintain that advantage. For those of you that don't know, I already have a wall running one on one video on the channel. If you want to go with the in depth tutorial on how to actually do these setups and how to do the wall running, check that video out to give you that extra insight on how to actually do it. But if you guys have enjoyed the video or learned anything from it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. And one thing I'd like to leave you guys with is that while learning a lot of this new stuff can be hard and difficult and you will lose a lot, it will make you better in the long run. Until next time, peace.